all right so a uh, level 3 introductory session so i'm going to help you out what is there in the level 3 how much amount of preparation you going to be required to go for a level 3 exam <clears throat> first i think by now everyone would be aware i think in the two days after you got your level 2 results on wednesday you would have done a little bit of a research and i think you would already know about it that the half of the exam is going to be a subjective exam how many are aware about it already for raise and raise and raise and the bottom of raise and the half of the exam is going to be a subjective exam now let me clarify this that this everyone knows that half of the exam is subjective exam but what you guys don't know some of you may not know this is not about like although they call it essay type question this truly not essay type questions truly it's conceptual questions kind of extended mcqs i will say what do you mean by extended mcqs till now in level 1 and level 2 you had to simply select the options a b or c a b c one of that and move on to the next question here in the half of the exam you have to select a b c and justify why are you selecting a b c these are going to be more type of a questions okay yes no agree disagree and justify whether you going to invest money of the client in equity bonds commodities or real estate and why so these are going to be the question that you will see in, in majority there will be some numericals where you won't have answers a b c you have to actually calculate the answers and then type the answers over there so uh wouldn't be something that is going to be like extraordinary going to be like a graduation wala by hearting wala thing no it's not going to go to that graduation by hearting wala is going to be like a same conceptual things that we did in level 1 and level 2 but only conceptual clarity will help you in the half of the paper because there are no options over here there is no like even there is no elimination guesswork or wo tukka wala thing is not there in the half of the paper the, the other half of the paper is going to be similar to what you had in level 1 and level 2 the total number of marks are going to be 264 okay 264 is going to be the total number of marks uh 132 in the first half where you will be required to justify i'm not not using the word essay type question i'm going to say justify and the other half 132 will comprise of 44 questions where each question will have 3 marks so that's 132 132 264 that's the total marks same 2 or 15 minutes in the morning that's 135 minutes in the morning and 135 minutes in the second half no more morning and evening actually i should say first half and second half so first half 135 minutes for 132 marks Essay type, they, that's what they call it. I say justification wale questions, and the second one is similar to what you had level level one, level two. Forty four questions, giving you one thirty two marks to be answered in one thirty five minutes. Uh, talking more about the uh, just the justi uh, justification wale questions, obviously is what you want me to answer. Obviously, you are interested in that. But before going for that, a good news or a bad news, you guys decide. Three subjects deleted. You would have done the research about it, obviously. I believe, but till still, I will tell you what are the three subjects that are deleted. One, FRA. I believe this will be a kind of a heart attack to the commerce guys, but I believe by now, science background student would have been like comfortable with the accounts by the time you come to level two, especially level two accounts was very interesting as compared to level one accounts. I believe so that employee compensation, the current rate, the temporal may rate, the HFT, HTM, equity, acquisition based method, all is gone. No more FRA in level three. How many happy? How many happy? Raise hand. <clears throat> all right. Another. good news or bad news you guys decide after level 1 kind of a easy cake walk for the engineers and the science background student with the stats time value of money uh, probability probability distribution sampling hypothesis and technical analysis and in level 2 being having a torture of those words conditional heteroscedasticity multi collinearity serial correlation bryce pagan test Durban Watson test two into n minus r. If you are able to recall, like still, <coughs> Dicky Fuller test. So after all this test, the cons has come to an end. How many sad? How many sad? Many people are sad about it, and especially I can see the commerce guys sad about it. That is surprising. Shall I take the names? I hope you don't mind. The commerce guys are sad about it. All right, Nicole, Simran, Inara. I know these are science. Uh, sorry, these are these are commerce background students. There, I'm saying sad, sad. I'm not saying happy. Let me let me repeat. Because of deletion of cons, how many sad? 
निकोल सिमरन इनारा निखिल रौनक जो सरप्राइजिंग संकेत आई कैन अंडरस्टैंड अंश क्रिया जो ओके आई थॉट कॉमर्स के भी हैप्पी होते थे कौन से जो होते हैं सब इज सरप्राइजिंग एक्चुअली एंड थर्ड सब्जेक्ट व्हिच आई एम सैड इज बीइंग डिलीटेड इज कॉर्पोरेट फाइनेंस so that was something that they could have added there's lot to the corporate finance actually as compared to what is being there in level 1 and level 2 there's lot more to the corporate finance which they could have kept it in level 3 they decided that there's not not going to be there so three subjects not going to be there one the fra second the cons and third one the corporate finance just a second sorry i'll just keep put it on the mute okay <coughs> The subject that remains common across all three levels, you know about it. That's that's. Tell me the chart section. What what subject remains common across all three levels? You had that in level one. You had a reduced subject in level two, which gyps not there. And now ethics comes back. Comes back? No, ethics. Thai gyps comes back with a detailed version in level three. So in level one, you had two chapters of ethics, were so kind of very easy. Okay. How many remember definition of composite? Just want to check. Raise hand. कंपोजिट में क्या होना चाहिए एनीवन रिकॉर्ड्स बीइंग इन लेवल 1 आई मीन आई थिंक 2 इयर्स बैक आई थिंक यू हैड टेकन नोन ओके आई टेल यू एंड देन यू रेज एंड इफ यू रिकॉल ओके कुनाल रिकॉल्स आई एम हैप्पी कुनाल या गो ऑन व्हाट शुड बी देयर इन कंपोजिट सो आई थिंक इट्स ऑल पोर्टफोलियोस व्हिच हैव अ सिमिलर स्ट्रेटजी स्टाइल मैंडेट गुड वी शुड बी वन मोर स्टेप अहेड दे शुड बी ट्रीटेड सिमिलरली लाइक यू कांट पुट देम इन मल्टीपल दैट्स फाइन इट्स फी पेइंग एंड डिस्क्रिशनरी Fee paying and discretionary portfolio should be there in the composite, so that gyps two chapters are going to come back not just with the same kind of uh, knowledge, but in much more in depth. The other part of ethics, which was there in level one, level two, the uh, the six codes and the seven standards, is going to be continuing in level three. Uh, you're going to get ten questions approximately in the second half. How many happy that ethics is not going to come in the first half? That is justification based. You don't have to type ki why did I select standard one A. So, go. I believe you should be happy about it because justification of ethics questions could have been not difficult had it come in the morning. I mean, had it come in the first half, it's going to come in the second half. So, ethics is going to come in the second half. That's a good thing about the, uh, it. Ethics, gyps could come in the morning. I mean, gyps could come in the justification parts rarely, but it has come in the actual papers. The gyps has come in the justification parts, but. Manageable tha. It's not difficult nahi tha. The gyps which came in the justification part. So, generally, ethics. Generally, ethics has never ever come in the uh, essay type question. It has always come in the MCQ. So ethics is one. And now coming to the remaining six subjects, usme there are some subjects, four subjects which you had in level one, namely equity, fixed income, derivatives, and economics. All right, remember equity, fixed income, derivatives, and economics. These four subjects are there with the extension of what you are seeing in level one, level two, and now level three. But obviously, in the level three, the focus will be from the portfolio management point of view. That means you would be uh, given a particular scenario, and then you have to kind of answer that in this scenario, whether fixed income would be better, or equity would be better, or derivative would be better in the portfolio. So the entire focus, which was earlier on the valuation, like level two, you look at look at it. Equity, pure valuation, tha. Dividend discount model of valuation, free cash flow valuation, residual income valuation, private company valuation, market based valuation, fixed income, uh, yield to maturity valuation, spot rate based valuation, forward rate pay, uh, based valuation. It was all about valuation. Now no more valuation. This is going to be basically finding out whether this, based on this scenario, this is better. Equity is better or fixed income is better. In fixed income, corporate bonds are better. Yeah, government bonds are better. In equity, cyclical stocks are better. Yeah, defensive stocks are better. So that kind of thing. Okay. So equity, I think there are four chapters, but quite easy. But main focus over here would be active management, passive management. So that that's going to be more kind of more focus over here. The active management versus the passive management. Uh, numericals are there. Equity weightage around ten percentage. Fixed income, a uh, little tricky. Compared to uh, the other chapter, other subjects in the level, this level, fixed income is slightly tricky. Concept called as immunization, where you will have an individual or an institutional with a liabilities, which could be like contractual liabilities, something like individual would have taken a home loan, so is liable to pay the EMIs, or the institution like a trust or a foundation is not having the liability truly, but they take. Like Tata Trust, they are committed to donate certain amount. So from that perspective, it's a non-contractual liabilities. 
So from that perspective, there is a liability that an individual or an institutional will have. And then you have to structure a kind of a bond portfolio so that those liabilities are going to be paid off, which is something called as immunization. So fixed income, another 10 percentage weightage, equity 10 percentage, fixed income 10 percentage, and ethics also 10 percentage. But fixed income, thoda sa tricky hai, calculation based kafi hai. So one is called as yield curve strategy, one is called as credit strategies. Just to give you a brief, yield curve strategy means yield curve steeper ho jayega ya flatter ho jayega. So then whether you choose long term bonds or whether you choose short term bonds. And credit curve strategy would mean that if the credit risk increases or decreases, corporate bonds to choose or government bonds to choose or within corporate bonds, investment grade is better ya high yield junk grade is better. So that's going to be the fixed income, 10 percent advantage. Then comes the derivatives. So derivatives ne humne level one and level two me kafi sara chiz dekha, lekin ek chiz nahi dekha tha, which is about the strategies which we actually apply while using those derivatives in the in the practical world. In level one, you saw forward futures pricing valuation. Level two me bhi apne valuation dekha, Black Scholes Merton model you saw it in detail. And about the forward contracts, forward rate agreements, swaps, you had uh, pricing also and valuation also. Pricing means F is equal to S into 1 plus RH to T and uh, 1 minus Z loss upon summation of all Z into frequency. Kiska ka formula hai? 1 minus Z loss upon summation of all Zs into frequency. Good, you guys remember. Swap, fix, rate. Good. So this all was about the pricing and the valuation. Now nothing. It's now going to be completely about strategies. Ki, uh, you might have heard about this name outside of CFA, something called it as bull call spread, bear put spread, something called it as collar, something called it as uh, the, uh, the, the protective put, the covered call, the straddle, strangle. So all these strategies will be coming into picture. Just to give you a perspective, uh, 2016 and 17, these strategies were there in level one. Then they moved it to level two and they, they moved it to level three which I believe is little a bad news because strategy is an integral part of derivative. They shouldn't have kept it so long, but okay, now we are getting a chance to hit those strategies of the derivatives. <clears throat> We're going to also look at the derivatives from the perspective of uh, tactical allocation. Tactics and strategy, I believe you would be knowing the difference. Strategy is long-term. So basically looking at the long term, I might decide that 40% of fixed income mein invest karna hai and 60% equity mein invest. Karna hai. But I may believe that next one month mein equity market is going to zoom up. So although my long term objective is 40% debt and 60% equity, but short term ke liye I want to like increase a bit more on equity, maybe make it 90% equity and reduce fixed income from 40 to 10 for some short term purpose. So this can be achieved little quickly implemented at a cheaper cost with the help of derivatives. We'll see how to make use of some futures contract to change this allocation temporarily. Why temporarily? Because future contracts are short term. Like the most liquid future contracts are one month, two month. So this becomes an optimal kind of an instrument to change the, uh, the weights and change the allocation for some temporary period of time. So we're going to discuss that from the portfolio management perspective. Derivatives has one more chapter actually, which is currency management. You had currency in level one, you had currency in level two. Level one currency taught you about ki wo konse country pegging use karti hai, konse country pegging nahi use karti hai. Uh, Jacob, you were talked about uh, that Marshall Lerner equation, WX, EX plus WM, EM minus one should be greater than zero absorption approach and uh, level two currency was amazing, right? All those uh, equations, first three new types of numerical, the arbitrage, the triangular arbitrage and the forward arbitrage and the mark to market questions. Okay. And then then a lot of theory. I think Charpach to naam yaad hongi abhi. Shall I tell? Uncovered interest parity. Okay. I will not ask right now. Okay. I'll tell you names. Covered interest parity, uncovered interest parity, fissure, domestic fissure, international fissure. Purchasing power parity and then Mundal Fleming model, Don Burge overshoot model, uh, pure monetary model. So there were lots of, lots of, lots of things that you discuss in currency. Now the currency is again coming from the portfolio management perspective that as an Indian investor, if you invest into European stocks, then while you invest into European stocks, the stocks are denominated in euros. So if the euro crash, you will have a loss. So shall we 
using the derivatives like futures or options shall we do something so that this risk of uh, euro crashing and we suffering a loss should that be hedged away that means should that be reduced down with the help of a futures contract or not what's the total return of a international portfolio like there will be two resources of return one return from the european stock and second the return from euro currency okay so there could be some correlation between european stock and euro currency also so this all is going to be covered in the currency management chapter lots and lots and lots of numericals but a interesting chapter so this three things one option strategies second is going to be the uh, the changing the allocations from strategic to tactical for some short period of time and then currency management these three things comprise of derivatives almost 10 percentage weightage almost slightly less than that but you can take it almost 10 percentage so char subject ho gaye ethics 10 percentage equity four chapters 10 percentage fixed income four chapters 10 percentage and derivatives three chapters almost like 8 or 10 percent something like that. i'm not able to exactly recollect the weights right now but almost you can say 10 percentage <coughs> then comes economics so economics we have only two chapters over here which is called as capital market expectations part 1 and part 2 Before that, let's recap what we did in level one economics and level two economics. Level one economics, one complete book on the economics, which had micro, macro, international, micro demand supply and industry structure, monopoly, oligopoly, etc. Macro, you had GDP in the level one, the the gross domestic product. Then you had that uh, monetary policy, fiscal policy, and then you had that business cycle. okay and then in the uh, international you had two chapters one is trade and second one is currency uh level 2 you had three chapters one is the currency topic that uh, i just mentioned second one was growth and third one was the i wouldn't say the scoring chapter did you like the third chapter of level 2 economics what was it about sebi what does sebi do regulations Or did anyone like that chapter? Third chapter was was short and sweet chapter. Not many liked it. The third chapter. What were my notes good for that chapter? Like I had made a concise note. I took a lot of effort to make those. Were they were those good for the from the exam point of view? All right, good. Okay, I'm happy. All right. Uh, so now coming to the level three, they are covering in the level three good stuff. which is about uh, how to project whether the economy is headed for expansion or a recession interesting right i mean you're going to be able to look at the parameters and with the help of that you're going to try to predict whether the economy is headed for expansion or recession and if it is headed for expansion which instruments to be invested if it is headed for recession which instruments to be uh, invested second about inflation if inflation is projected to be more then which instruments will be better if inflation is projected to be lesser which instrument is better if there is a deflation negative inflation then which instrument is better this all is going to be there in the the two chapters of economic capital market expectations part 1 and part 2 okay uh, over here we will also discuss about projecting like currency also like which currency will appreciate which currency will depreciate so that part also will be covered over the so focusing capital focus will be at cap forecasting capital market expectation ki which part of the capital market is going to do well equity debt currencies which currency will do well so that's there in economics which is again i think have a weightage of almost like 5 to 10 percentage so you can say like almost like 10 percentage weightage roughly i'm saying so it is 10 equity four chapters 10 fixed income four chapters 10 derivatives three chapters almost like 10 and uh, economics almost like uh, sorry two chapters almost like uh, almost like weightage of 10 percentage okay so this becomes the kind of the the five subject which you had in level 1 and they are level 1 level 2 they have been level 3 also three chapters which were then level 1 level 2 uh, which uh, we know have been deleted are fra corporate finance and your uh courts Okay, the sixth chapter, which is there in level one and level two, and there in level three also is AI, alternative investment. In level one, this was just one chapter with everything given in brief: private equity, fees calculation, management fee, incentive fee calculation. Level two in detail: real estate, two chapters; commodity, one chapter; private equity, one chapter. Okay, in quite detail, level two AI. uh again focus over there was on valuation of a private company or a valuation of real estate 
over here in ai we're going to focus more on the hedge funds as well as pe funds real estate ke upar zyada focus nahi hai focus is more on hedge funds and pe funds we we'll discuss a lot of strategies of hedge fund and pe fund and the most important thing that we're going to discuss in ai ki every hedge fund strategy mein diversification which is the main objective of investing into alternative investment the diversification so what is the source from where we are going to get a diversification is in hedge in each hedge fund strategy i think you will recollect about hedge fund strategies in the in the level 1 there were like strategies four types of uh, bifurcations were given how many recollect Event driven, then relative value, macro. No, bhool gaye. Okay, Simran, good. All right. Uh, so all those strategies are going to come back in level three in much more in detail. And interestingly, when the focus will be is on the uh, the diverse equation. What is the source of diverse equation? AI has two chapters, and the weightage is around five percentage. Okay, alternative investment two chapters, weightage is five percentage. Then the seventh, eighth, ninth subject I said is deleted, and what is the tenth subject? Tenth subject, which is spending. So we covered ethics, equity, fixed income, derivatives, economics, AI. Ethics ten, ethics chapter I don't recollect, but I think uh, I think. Forget me, but I'm. Who level one meta? Why is? But uh, you have to practice. Don't take it lightly. Equity I said four chapters, ten percentage. Fixed income four chapter, ten percentage. Derivatives three chapter, almost ten percentage. Economics. Two chapters, almost like five to ten percentage. AI, two chapters, five percentage. Six, seven, sorry, seven, eight, nine is deleted. The tenth one is portfolio management, which is huge. Okay, so portfolio management has lot of subtypes into it. I'll talk about the subtypes. So first, we will uh, focus on the three things in the portfolio management, which is called as asset allocation. There are three chapters in the asset allocation, which will help a portfolio manager. Who has some kind of a uh, a uh, formal tools with the help of which he will be able to allocate the uh, investment of the client into proper investment tools, equity bond, fixed income. I'm sorry, equity bond, uh, derivatives, currency, etc. Which we had covered in level one. Uh, something called as mean variance optimization, then efficient frontiers, CAL, capital allocation line. That theory part of level one, which was missing in level two. ये part level two में नहीं था. Uh, so that come back in the level three, in the three chapters, uh, the asset allocation one. So that's one part of portfolio management. So I think by now you would have seen the waiter guys and you would have been shocked. The portfolio management forty forty five percent is cute, because it has used things. So this is the three chapters, which is the one part of your asset, uh, which is one part of your portfolio management. Three chapters in asset allocation. Okay. Next comes the individual wala part. So individual may there is one which is obviously going to be there which you by now you would have guessed ki uska portfolio objectives return objective risk objective and TTLLU ये level one में था TTLLU time tax legal liquidity and unique constraints so this is called as the IPS investment policy statement so making of that is going to be there as one kind of a chapter which is individual portfolio management making of IPS more in detail and every year. Every paper, you can expect one question on this part surely that there will be some individual guy. Is this his year of age? He has this, this is children, uh, one wife, and this, this is many children, and he this is the objective, etc. And based on that, you make a IPS. Uh, isme individual mehi apart from the IPS, there's one important thing which is biases, behavior biases, which leads to sometimes irrational behavior. Which could result into sometimes bubbles in the market or crashes in the markets. So there is a uh, three chapter, sorry, two chapters on the biases. Two types of biases actually. I just brief you. Now they have brought it that biases to level one directly. Is there in level three? But they have brought it to level one also. One is faulty thinking, wrong thinking. Okay, this is called as cognitive biases. And second one is driven by the emotions. Ki I am saying this will happen. I mean, with what? Kind of saying this will happen. This could happen is fine. I mean, this will happen. This kind of overconfidence. Okay, so uh, this is just an example of an emotion of being overconfident. I am attached to this mouse. So whatever success that I had in my coaching class is because of this mouse being there with me. This is non-living thing. It doesn't have any emotions, but I am emotionally attached to it. This is a endowment bias. So, if you ask me, sir, will you sell this mouse to me? 
I'll say no. But if you say one crore, then I may consider. But if, I mean, the fair price of this mouse might be 500 rupees, but I'm not okay with selling this to you for 500 because I am emotionally attached to it. So you may have to pay me more than 500 to get this mouse from me. This is, so sorry, this is very seen in real estate where you know the fair price of your home is 1 crore, but you want 1.2, 1.3 because you're emotionally attached to that. So that's endowment bias, which is the second thing which is there in the individual. You understand what I mean? Portfolio management is a big umbrella. Usme asset allocation ke three chapters ho now we are in the individual. So individual may I cover first the IPS all apart and now I'm looking at the behavior biases. Two chapters over there in behavior biases. The next chapter is again an interesting chapter, which is about a guy who is having a very concentrated portfolio, very, very like 80, 90 percent. Like, for example, me, my uh, total worth may say 60 to 70 percent of my wealth is concentrated into RK finance classes, heavily concentrated portfolio, which we know in level one stupidity to have it. You should have a diversified portfolio. So how will you convince someone who has a concentrated portfolio key? He's doing a stupidity. He should diversify the portfolio. So that's one chapter, concentrated portfolio to convert that into diversified portfolio. Again, over here, behavior biases will come into picture. If you tell me, if you recommend me, sir, aapka bahut jada investment RK finance classes mein diversify karo. I may say no, because I want to control RK finance classes. I believe I am emotionally attached to RK finance classes. So there could be a behavior biases perspective over there. The next chapter is about estate planning, which is quite interesting, especially if you have a family business. How do you pass it on to the next generation at the same time, not let the Ambani's dispute? The Dhirubhai Ambani's wife had played a big role in separating their empire into two uh, Ambani's, Mukesh and the other, Adil. So over there, the estate planning is going to come into big, 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 big picture. So there are lots and lots of interesting stuff in the estate planning, the legal also as well as the uh, the other rational stuff also. So that's estate planning. So I spoke about concentrated and then I spoke about estate planning and the, most, the next most important thing is tax. A lot of taxes, one is tax on the income, tax on the investment, tax on entire wealth also, wealth-based taxation. So that's one complete chapter on how does a tax reduce your return or how does a tax drag your return down? Okay, so imagine portfolio management, Three chapters of asset allocation. Now we are looking at individual portfolio management. In the individual, I spoke about IPS. Then I spoke about biases. Then I spoke about concentrated asset diversification. Then I spoke about the estate planning. And now the part which I said tax is there in individual also and institutional also. Okay. One more chapter in individual is about risk management. So whatever the risk that individual possesses, shall he continue to have the exposure? or shall he buy insurance? So health insurance, uh, life insurance, vehicle insurance. So shall he go in and buy those insurance or shall he manage the risk by himself? So that's about risk management. And if you are advising that he should get insured, then how much? Like how much life insurance shall I buy? So that's one kind of a good calculation that how much life insurance is, is enough. Audio is not working. Are you not able to hear me? Shrivat sir is saying, how many are not able to, how many are able to hear me properly? I'm audible, right? Okay. So that's the last thing in the individual one. Okay. So that's the last thing in the individual. She was log out and log off. I don't, I don't know if he will be able to hear me, but she was, can you hear me? She was, no, I don't think she will be able to hear you. I'll try. She was, can you hear me? Okay. Someone type in the chat section. Someone help me out, please. Someone type in the chat section to everyone uh, that she watch, please log out and log in. Okay, someone please do that for me. Okay, coming to the institutional one now. In the institutional one, there is only one thing which is about IPS. Okay, there's only one thing. But institution mein kya kya hai? one is foundation. Thank you, Nachikin. Okay, foundation, endowments, pension funds, which we see in uh, level two, pensions, pension funds. And the banks. So these are the four institution, foundation, endowments, uh, the banks and the pension fund, just come here, IPS. Some exam, any, obviously everything will not come in the exam. One of that will come in the exam. Okay. So that's all syllabus for around 40 to 45 percent. Let me put it on the screen for those guys who had not taken the notes. How many were just listening to me as a movie? 
be genuine. Okay, for all 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 these lazy guys, I'm going to mention it on the screen now. So ethics, ten percentage weightage, same syllabus as compared to what you had in level one and level two. Uh, equity, different syllabus compared to level one and level two. Around four chapters with a weightage of ten percentage. Fixed income, little difficult. Four chapters with a weightage of around ten percentage. Economics, we have two chapters. Around, I will say, just I will write seven percent weightage in general. Derivative investment, we have three chapters around ten percentage weightage. And AI, we have two chapters with a weightage of total weightage of around five percent. So this part summarizes to how much? Ten, twenty, thirty, forty, forty-seven. 57 and around 60 percent. I will say around 60 percent, which come from this part, and then in the umbrella of portfolio management, which is around 40 percentage weightage. The first thing which I said, asset allocation. I can't have a subject-wise breakage. Or, I mean, topic-wise breakage over here, but I'll try. It will come for around 10 percentage weightage. Then behavior biases will come for something like 5 percentage weightage with the two topics over there. Then individual kids who top topic which I said one was about concentrated asset diversification, estate planning, and 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 one more I said yeah individual risk management. Okay, so these are the things I said. Actually, behavior has to be. It may be asked, but I, I put it separately. This concentrated asset, estate planning, and uh, the risk management. This approximately weightage of around ten percentage, and uh, then individual. And institutional IPS, this will come for around fifteen percent. This is this is roughly I am saying. So this is your level three syllabus. I told you about the marks. Total marks two sixty four. Split one thirty two in the subjective kind of a question, and uh, one thirty two, which is forty four questions into three marks for MCQs. Okay. uh don't go with the level 2 passing rates i believe this would could be an exception i don't know it could be too early to say but i believe the level 2 november 21 passing rate was a exception level 3 passing rate which is going to come on 3rd february could give us a little bit of a more perspective but except the level 2 november 21 the entire year the passing rate was quite low so i assume that you need to score approximately the mps Where you believe? No, I will not say MPS. I will say hundred percent guarantee pass will a score. Hundred percent guarantee pass will a score would be somewhere around one sixty. Could guarantee the pass one sixty. Yeah, in terms of the passing, uh, it's around sixty five percentage approximately. It's come to one seventy, but even one sixty could pass. But let let's make it one sixty five. So one sixty five can guarantee pass. Or let me say, let me write one seventy to be on the safer side. So one seventy will guarantee the pass. So uh, the target generally when I when I ask the students to target, so generally I tell that over here and over here, over here you should try to get approximately around forty four questions. At least thirty-three right, which will give you around ninety-nine or hundred marks. If you get thirty-three, right. thirty-three out of forty-four is not a joke. Seventy-five percent accuracy is something which is possible to achieve in level three. The, it was difficult in level two, but it's it's very possible to achieve in level three. So for that, focus on MCQ. Don't just focus on the morning question. If you get hundred over here, getting seventy over here, it's it's going to be very, 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 very easy. Seventy over here is just around like fifty, fifty-five percentage. You may say, sir, वहाँ पे इतना कम टारगेट क्यों है? Because over here there will be time uh, challenge. For the first time in CFA, we have time challenges where if you are attempting complete one thirty marks could be a challenge. You could be happy if you attempt even one twenty marks. Twelve marks, I am saying you may have a short of time. So if you practice, you will be able to completely attempt one thirty. But many students, they end up attempting one twenty marks. So one twenty का sixty percent will be around seventy. So if you get like seventy in the morning and hundred in the afternoon, it's hundred percent pass. Now, you know the level to November twenty one ka passing rate was fifty percentage, around fifty percentage was passing. So considering that here it could be like one thirty five also pay also pass. Okay, but obviously that an exception. We should target something around one seventy to have a peace of mind because level to three ka result two and a half months ke baad aata hai. 
So if you want to have a 75 days of peaceful sleep, target 170 plus. For which the total number of hours should come to around uh, 650 hours approximately, which can guarantee that you will score around 170 plus. Content wise, yes, it's easier than the uh, level two. You don't have that black schools, Merton. You don't have that uh, synergy valuations or FCFF calculations. You don't have that binomial tree for fixed income. So content wise, it's little easier as compared to, you don't have that current rate, temporal rate, PBO calculations, you don't have it. Uh, content wise is little bit easier, but the challenge is the deep understanding. Okay, not the not the having over you, the deep understanding would be required for that morning. I mean, the first half of the paper where it's going to be subjective. So over there, it's going to be a deep part. Uh, so 600 to 650 approximately hours could guarantee that you will pass this exam because you'll score 170 plus surely. All right. Uh, value of this exam. Uh, by the way, before I get into the value, uh, Jinko apply karna scholarship wo kar sakta apply. Woman scholarship is open till 20th Jan. It's no more professional woman. It's only woman scholarship. So anyone can apply. Woman. Okay. So you should be a female to apply for that scholarship. And second one is by the woman scholarship is still 20th Jan. Access scholarship is still 14 February. And uh, CF Institute has clarified that if you apply for scholarship and if you don't get it, the early bird fees will be still applicable. Amazing. I repeat, if you apply for access scholarship or women's scholarship, and if you don't get it, the early bird fees is still going to be applicable. How many happy? How many happy? Good. So CF Institute has clarified it. It's not done on the website, but few students had mailed to the CF Institute and CF Institute has replied to them. If you want that mail to be on the safer side, you can also uh, mention to the CF Institute that what if I apply for access scholarship and I don't get it? They will mention, they will reply you back that uh, you will be eligible for early bird fees. So that's a good thing. So you can apply for a scholarship. Coming to uh, the value addition of CFA level three versus level two. CFA level three is more from the perspective of portfolio management. And hence in the industry, if you are going to be there in the portfolio management field, then the level three will have a value. Otherwise, if you're working in the other fields like investment banking, corporate advisory, mergers acquisition, if you're working in fixed income trading, uh, if you're working in credit rating or credit research, uh, not much value for level three. But obviously, uh, they will look for CFA completion. But from the perspective of level two versus level three, they will generally keep you at par. Obviously, level three would be more preferable over level two, but from the content point, whatever content that you have learned in level two would be good enough for you to make a, into a good corporate. All right. So do not like sacrifice your professional commitments for level three, especially now with the level three frequency being increased. Do not sacrifice your professional commitments. Personal commitment sacrifice can be individual choice, but professional commitment, please sacrifice Matkaro for your level three preparations. Okay, uh, which could be like Nachiketa's, I think someone had asked Masters, GMAT, GRE, if I'm planning for it, should I keep it on hold for level three? No, please big no. In many, many, many foreign universities, level two has a great value. So just focus on getting a good GRE score or a good GMAT score, GRE for MS, GMAT for MBA. And uh, you already have a good SOP with level two clear. Level three could be a feather in the cap, but Cap hai, abhi bhi aapke paas. But good, good resume. Um, your SOP would be already strong. So just get into good college by getting a good score in GRE or a GMAT. Similarly, professional commitments do not sacrifice them for clearing level three because level three frequency is there quite a lot. The only bad thing that has happened is November 22 exam. They are pre it to August. November 22 ke jaga, August 22. Dhone pre kar diya exam. That's a little bad thing actually. Uh, some of you may consider it as a good thing that I will be able to finish my level three fast. But for me, I would believe that it is a little bad thing. Probably a little bit more time could have been more better because May 22, even it is, you guys are eligible for May 22, but I would say it could be very challenging to do that in the period of four months. February, March, April, and then May, Atha, and Abhi, January, ka 10 days. So level three, May 22 would be quite of very challenging. I wouldn't recommend personally to anyone to do level three, May 22 unless you want to do that as 
a kind of a record breaker level 1 feb 21 level 2 november 21 and level 3 may 22 level 1 feb 21 and level 3 may 22 1.5 years will be lesser mein. if you want to have a record that i cleared level 3 in the how much span of one year three months if you have that ambition then go ahead with level 3 may 22 if you want to anyone in that category level 1 feb 21 level 2 november 21 Good. So if you want to make a record that then yes, then this is a this is a challenge that you can go for it. But kuch chata fari thing mein na extra karke bhi 1.5 years is also good. Level 1 Feb 21 and level 3 August 22. So be realistic at the time of making a record also. Alright, just, just telling you. Uh, but yes, if you could manage level 3, it will be a record because no one has done that as of now. Very, very, very few guys will be able to manage level 1 Feb 21 to level 3 May 22. Very challenging. I mean, I'm generally... I took 2.5 years. Yeah, right. December 19, sorry, December 9, level 1, June 10, no, 1.5 years. December 2009, level 1, June 10, level 2, June 11, level 3. So you can uh, actually have that and you can mention on your resume if cleared 1.25 years may all three levels of CFA in case you won't have, have that ambitions. Otherwise, I'll say make a August kardu for all others. Teen minutes are kuch nahi farak padta. And uh, if you believe that 600, 650 hours are going to be not that easy, even for August, seven months, mein nahi hoga, then there is a little bit of bad news that after August, the exam is there in Feb 23 directly. So in such case, what you should do? Start your preparations. Apply for a scholarship because you will be eligible for early deadline until 31st March. Got it what I'm trying to say? If you apply for a scholarship, you will be eligible for level 3, August 22 with early deadline and with reduction of fees till 31st March. That's a good thing. So if you believe ki aise karna to you can do that. Okay, I'm not recommending because when you apply for a scholarship, obviously the genuine candidates ka chance scholarship mein ka kam ho jata hai. So there's the ethics also that you need to take into law. To nahi hai. Law ke sabse you can apply, anyone can apply for scholarship. But ethical way also you need to think about it. But I'm just looking at one way that 31st March ko result aane wala hai scholarship ka to till 31st March I am eligible for an early bird deadline. No more 8 February, it's 31st March. And with a chance of getting it lower to $250 for access, $350 for women's scholarship. Clear what I'm trying to say? In case, just in case you believe ki August ke shayad time hoga nahi hoga in that perspective. So I guess this is it which I wanted to tell you. Uh, from the class wala point, I will talk about it. Ki how are we going to conduct class, etc. separately. But class wale questions, Baji mein, sir, frequency of lectures was a bar, bar mein. About level 3, anything that you believe that I didn't cover, which I should, tell me. Ask me. No class questions as of no class questions will be later. Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, sir. So uh, I wanted to ask you for level one and level two. So it was fine. We had MCQ based format. So we could practice MCQs and we could check the answer A, B, C, whether it's correct or wrong. But for level three, when we have these essay type questions, how do we practice that? Because uh, it's very subjective. Number one, I would be uh, sending you a kind of a small video of level one and level two concepts, which are there in level three also. Uh, you know the concept, so I'll send you a video on that, ki how kind of essay type of questions could come and that will give a perspective. And then about other chapters, the role of faculty will come into picture to exactly guide you, kya likhna chahiye tha, kya likhne se 3 out of 3 milega. And uh, if you don't write it, then one mark will be deducted or two marks will be deducted or three marks will be deducted. So there the role of faculty will come into picture to give you feedback ki what was exactly supposed to be written. But in general, if I were to give you a kind of a, uh, kind of a, kind of a view ki what is the essence of a essay type question, then I'll send you a video on that. Okay, so okay. YouTube, I'll send you a YouTube link. Okay, sir. Thank you. All right, guys, anything else? Raise hand, please. If you have any doubts, so if you believe I have uh, touched upon everything, then just mention that. I mean, then we'll close it. I've talked about content. I talked about the value. I talked about the scholarship deadline. I talked about February 8th, effectively March 31st. And uh, in minimum passing score, I, I wouldn't focus on minimum. So it's a hundred percent passing score is one seventy out of two sixty four. May I'm, I, I would say I'm demotivating you to go for May. I'm motivating you to go for August or Feb twenty three. I think uh, Urvi had asked this question, right? Level three full time May. No, I would not say that will not be an advisable thing. 
uh, to do a full time level three, no. I would not advise. Advise it to do. I mean, ऐसा नहीं कि मतलब जॉब में आप करोगे वो लेवल थ्री में टेस्ट होगा. But still, many of the candidate. I mean, once you go for an interview, level three में का रिजल्ट आएगा approximately July में, August में actually. So if you are unemployed till August, then it could be a little bit of problematic. So I wouldn't say that go for level three May full time, unless you want to make that record. But कुछ फायदा नहीं actually वो record का. Trust me, देता है वो कुछ कुछ फायदा नहीं है. You can go for level three August and simultaneously work somewhere. Anything else, Yasir Joy? Hello, sir. Yeah, Joy. Yeah, uh, sir. The portion for Feb twenty three, August twenty three. Slightly changes. Feb twenty two. Ah, uh, sorry, Feb twenty three is going to be slightly different as compared to the August twenty two. But right now, don't worry about it so much. It wouldn't drastically change. So you can uh, study for the two thousand twenty two as of now. And Feb twenty three may just slight change over. So that can be done later on. So don't worry. It's more like complete deletion and complete addition. Slight change will be there in from two thousand twenty to two thousand twenty three. So if you believe that August twenty will not be there, I'm going to go for Feb twenty three. Don't wait for the syllabus to get released. Start with the preparation, and then whatever edits will be there, just look at the edits later on. Okay, sir. Thank you. I repeat what she was asking. She was not interested in May twenty two, nor in August twenty two. She was interested in Feb twenty three, and Feb twenty three's syllabus is not there. So what I was recommending is go with the two thousand twenty two syllabus for level three, and then edited syllabus of twenty three will be slightly, not much. Yes, Nachi. Ah, sir, this may be a subjective question, but uh, I've heard a lot of people say uh, that uh, in all the three levels, le passing level two is uh, supposed to be the hardest. Content. But I wanted to just content-wise, okay. level two is the most difficult from the understanding of concept. Lot of concepts actually, and I had mentioned also eighty-eight question. I mean, you also should know in the exam that many tough questions wouldn't have been tested because of limitation on eighty-eight uh, number of questions. So level two content-wise is Too much into difficulty, I would believe, and uh, yes, level sir. three content might would be easier, but the structure of the exam where you have to type the answers, write now, now, now no more writing actually, typing of the answers is going to be a little bit a challenging structure. Content might right. be easier than level two. Okay, thank you. I repeat, level three content might is easier than level two, but structure of the exam. What makes level three a competitive as compared to level two? Same competitive, not saying more competitive. Content might is fine, level three easier. All right. So, Q and A. I think someone has put some questions. Is the curriculum important over Shweta? That's an important thing, actually. Uh, the Shwezas is a fantastic job in my opinion in level one and level two. In level three, they have not done a decent job. But still, I would say that I prefer Shwezas over curriculum. But you will be responsible for making the deficiencies, and I will be uh, helping you in that. Ki kahan pe Shwezas has not done a good job. If I say level one, me Shweta's ka kam ka accuracy was around ninety nine percent. Is Shweta's was accurate? Level two ninety five percent accuracy. I will say five percent had missed it out. Level three it's around seventy five percent. So about one one fourth of the syllabus will have to make your notes to make the Shweta's comprehensive. Don't buy insured books. They're too bulky. Too 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 bulky. So don't buy insured book. Refer Shweta's, but be prepared. Ki Shweta's. On a standalone basis, wouldn't be good enough. You require some extra stuff, which is going to cover the deficiency of the students. All right. So this was about introduction to level three.